Orthodox Jewish feminism, also known as Orthodox feminism amongst Jews, is a movement in Orthodox Judaism which seeks to further the cause of a more egalitarian approach to Jewish practice within the bounds of Jewish law. The major organizations of this movement is the Jewish Orthodox Feminist Alliance in North America, and Women of the Wall and its affiliates in Israel and internationally, known as ICWOW, the International Committee for Women of the Wall. In Israel, the leading Orthodox feminist organization is Kolech, started by Dr. Hannah Kaha. Australia has one Orthodox partnership Minyan, Shira Hadasha, in Melbourne. The movement relies on liberal interpretations of Jewish law, by both modern and classical rabbinic scholars, taking advantage of the lack of universal consensus on legal interpretations amongst rabbis in different eras. Topic characteristics Orthodox feminists, using historical precedents and the aforementioned liberal legal interpretations, allow the practice of ritual in manners that more traditional or conservative interpretations consider as befitting only to men. Many of the practices of Orthodox feminists are held to be controversial because of their different approach to the everyday routine of most Orthodox Jews. Several specific rituals and practices are of particular concern. Topic fighting for Aguno Aguno are women who have asked for a divorce, or who have been left by their husband, and the husband refuses to grant a get. A get is a Jewish certificate of divorce required for the woman to be able to remarry. Recalcitrant husbands are pressured by society to grant the get to the wife, who is stuck in limbo, without a husband and unable to remarry. Orthodox feminists make a priority of fighting on the behalf of Aguno, and the Aguna crisis. Many fight in organizations specifically for this purpose, and some work independently. Topic interaction with the Torah Kissing the Torah scroll with a sitter prayer book, hand, or directly with the lips, during Shabbat, Yom Tob, services is a convention found in many modern Orthodox congregations as well as non-Orthodox ones. While many may take it for granted as an integral part of worship services, it is not practiced in Haredi and Chasidic congregations. Dancing with the Torah and having hakafoth processional circuits around the sanctuary on Simith Torah is another way in which many Orthodox Jews interact with the Torah which is an especially important ritual in feminist circles. These are some reasons why this act has special meaning in Orthodox feminist circles. Topic participation in Zimunim One of the most prevalent, and perhaps least controversial practices of Orthodox feminists, even done by some women outside of the movement, is the participation in a women's zimun. The women's zimun takes place when less than three men have eaten together, but where three or more women have eaten together. A zimun is a formal call to prayer said before the communal recitation of Berketh Hamazon. One formula for the women's zimun is exactly the same formula as the zimun of men, but substituting chivero Hebrew, friends f for the word rabotai Hebrew, gentlemen in the beginning of the invitation, thus feminizing the call. Topic use of prayer shawls in Orthodox feminism The donning of a talith prayer shawl is not seen as the wearing of a man's garment, neither is it seen as an affront to the community. These reasons coupled with historical precedents, such as the donning of Talethith by Rashi's daughters in popular legend, and permission by Rabbi Moshe Feinstein among others, make the wearing of prayer shawls by women common in Orthodox feminist circles. Use of tefillin Citing Talmudic and later sources, Orthodox feminists allow the laying of tefillin by women. Some Orthodox communities claim that women are not permitted to lay tefillin, as is required by adult men. The duty of laying tefillin rests upon males after the age of 13 years and one day. Women are exempt from the obligation, as are also slaves and minors The medieval halachic work Orich Chaim precludes women who wish to wear tefillin from doing so. In ancient times, this was not the case. There are several instances of women who allegedly wore tefillin. According to a Bereida, Mihal the daughter of the Kushite, i.e., Saul, cf. Mode Katan 16b, wore tefillin and the sages did not protest. Eruvin 96a. After the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE, women became increasingly excluded from Jewish ritual activities as Rabbinic Judaism became increasingly codified. Women became exempt from almost all time-bound positive commandments, prayer three times a day, sitting in the sukkah, and laying tefillin. The Mishnah tractate entitled Nashim women is the most comprehensive dealing with the legal aspects of women's roles in Judaism. 
Medieval Ashkenazi communities represented a high point in women's voluntary participation in Judaism, even in aspects supposedly forbidden to them by Talmudic law. Women of northern France were known to put on tefillin to pray. In addition to tefillin, women were documented as being counted in prayer quorums, and serving as a sandekad at circumcision feasts. However, the political and economic situation of European Jewry gradually worsened beginning in the 13th century. In response, communities reverted to more traditional practices, and most of the gains Jewish women had achieved were put to a stop. Activities Orthodox Jewish feminists participate in a number of organized and informal activities which both demonstrate their commitment to their values as both feminists and as Orthodox Jews. Holding conferences of various kinds is a major activity that Orthodox Jewish feminists use to educate, show recognition, and strengthen the movement. Jofa organizes conferences for its members and the public drawing crowds from both North America, and internationally. As well, some Orthodox feminists participate in partnership minyanim and other independent minyanim where they feel comfortable and are permitted to practice Judaism in their unique way. This phenomenon was the topic of discussion of Mechan Hadar, a conference about independent minyanim. Communal leadership A new office in some synagogues, particularly of the Open Orthodox Movement is allowing women to serve as synagogue or congregational interns, a position traditionally held by men only. Spiritual leadership Blue Greenberg advocates for women to ascend to the Orthodox rabbinate. Mimi Fiegelson was an Orthodox student of Shlomo Karlbach who was ordained after his death, but she doesn't use the term rabbi in reference to herself out of respect for Orthodox social structure. Haviva Ner David has the equivalent of Orthodox ordination, but teaches at a conservative yeshiva. Sarah Hurwitz is the Maharat of the Hebrew Institute of Riverdale. She has the full training of an Orthodox rabbi. Her title is an acronym for Manhiga Hilchatit Rukhanit Taranit, a Halakhic spiritual and Torah leader. According to Rabbi Avi Weiss, she is a full member of the clergy. A Maharat has functions as spiritual leader, gives pastoral care, and leads life cycle events, as well as having authority to teach Torah. She has the authority to answer questions of Jewish law. In some communities, a spiritual leadership position other than rabbi is held by a woman. Dina Najman is Ars Ki Rosh Kahila Hebrew, head of, community of Kehelet Orich Eliezer on Manhattan's Upper West Side. Sharona Margolin Halakman is a Madrika Rukhanit or spiritual mentor of the Hebrew Institute of Riverdale. Maharat Rachel Cole Feingold is the Director of Education and Spiritual Enrichment at Congregation Shar Hashemayim in Montreal and is involved with Jofa. Lynn Kay is the equivalent of an associate rabbi at Shirath Israel in Manhattan. Maharat Ruth Belinsky Friedman is the Maharat at the National Synagogue in Washington, D.C. Rory Picker Nee serves as the Director of Programming, Education and Community Engagement at BAI. Abraham Congregation in St. Louis, Mo. In 2015, Jenny Rosenfeld became the first female Orthodox spiritual advisor in Israel, specifically, she became the spiritual advisor, also called Manhiga Rukhanit, for the community of Efrat, and same year Miriam Goncharska of Poland, has received Maharat Smicha as first European. Australia's Shira Hadasha invited Maharat Melanie Landau to be its spiritual head, however, she declined the role. The community remains lay-led and service leadership and laning are performed by congregants such as Mandy Katz and Alex Fine. Topic see also Partnership Mignon topic Bibliography Hartman, Tova, Feminism Encounters Traditional Judaism, Resistance and Accommodation. Brandeis, Lebanon, New Hampshire, 2008 topic Notes and references topic External links Jofa, the Jewish Orthodox Feminist Alliance Women of the Wall, Jewish Virtual Library My Jewish Learning, Orthodox Feminism for the 21st Century Koa, Kehelet Orich Eliezer the Bayat the Hebrew Institute of Riverdale